Well, hello there. It's been a while since I've been on Facebook Live and I wanted to pop on it and say hello. I've been super busy um, the last couple of weeks. I have been, um, oh my gosh, seriously. I, like my husband said the other day, I've been working on the PowerPoint that's I've, that I've been working on for forever. <laughs> uh, we're doing some new things for our team to like onboard people um, online and get them just into our training and stuff like that online and inside of our private group. And so I feel like I've been working on that for forever. Um, I'm also working on a website and a blog. Um, some of you guys have been asking for like one place to be able to watch like a lot of different videos and a lot of different things that I've done kind of like a one-stop shop so I've been putting that together um, we're launching a book club I've been doing a lot of the things um, but I was really excited because I actually just had a um, person on my team who hit a leadership rank and hit a really amazing bonus um, in her first 30 days and I always like to go back and hopefully you guys do this too but when something really cool happens in my business, I always want to kind of like go back and identify what were we doing to make that happen, right? Like what are some of the things we had in place that were helping that along? And every time I launch a new person into my business, I feel like I learn something, especially when they take off and start flying. So I thought it'd be really fun to list out some of the things that we actually had conversations about. And I thought, this would be really good for um, for those of you who are in network marketing, but also if you're in direct sales, like if you do home parties, this will apply to you too. If you're an entrepreneur and you have your own business, maybe it's not network marketing, but if you have your own business and you're getting it on, you know, flying, um, that can feel like the same thing. So if you're an entrepreneur, if you're in network marketing, um, if you are in direct sales, even if, if like you're a real estate agent, this will probably be applicable to you too. You'll probably find some nuggets in this. Here's the thing, like it is my honest, I really hope that your mentor or your, if you're network marketing, your team leader, your sponsor, it is my hope that they taught you this. Um, but I get it, like sometimes in network marketing, we are like ignorance on fire and we just don't know what we don't know, right? And there's an innocence to that. Um, if your sponsor just simply doesn't know this, um, then how are they supposed to teach it to you, first of all, right? Um, and if they are just kind of out of the loop a little bit, um, sometimes, you know, sponsors can be a little old school and they're teaching you things that worked for them four, five, six, seven years ago that aren't going to work today to launch a business. Okay, so maybe they're just simply not up and up. So what I wanted to do is I went back through our conversations that I had with my new promoter and I made some notes of like the things that we talked about and I thought it would be really fun to to give this to you guys. So what I'm actually doing um, here for a second is I'm actually sharing this into a couple of groups. If you guys happen to share this, share it into your team pages. If you are a team leader, um, this is just, here's the deal. This is gonna be like third party validation if you have already taught your team this, <laughs> okay? Hearing it from someone else helps affirm and validate what you have probably already taught them. If hearing it from someone else, maybe phrased in a different way, can help them, that's this is totally generic. I'm not gonna talk about companies or anything like that. That is not the way I work anyways. Nobody's gonna get private messages. What I love to see though is like when you share this with your people or on your Facebook, share it onto your timeline because if people follow you on Facebook who are in direct sales and who are in network marketing, here's what people love to see on Facebook. They love to see value. They love to see things that help them grow their business or up level their life or just be a better person, right? So you sharing good stuff um, is you providing value to the people who follow you. So if you have people on your timeline who are in network marketing and direct sales, who are entrepreneurs, who just wanna always continue like up level themselves, they're gonna like this. Oh yes, thank you. This is my MTV t-shirt. I'm super proud of it. <laughs> I'm an 80s kid. Well, actually I'm a 1976 kid, but Seriously, I'm all about the MTV and it's like spray paint, like graffiti, I love it. Okay, so let's get right into this. Um, so here's the thing, how many of you guys got really good training? Like when you were a brand new promoter, you feel like you got 
awesome training and you knew what to do like step by step right out of the gate. Do you think that was you? Um, I will tell you, most people did not start that way. Most people did not start right out of the gate being led step by step, here's what to do, here's a landmine to avoid, <laughs> don't do this, do this, don't worry about that. Most people were just signed up and said, read the manual or watch the video and then there you go, good luck, <laughs> okay? Most people were started that way. Many of us had to kind of figure it out the hard way through probably a lot of errors made along the way, a lot of, well, that didn't work, that didn't do what it, they said they were, it was gonna do, um, or years of just nothing, years of dormancy, years of not doing anything, not seeing any results in their business, um, that happens too. And so <clears throat> I'm gonna give you guys literally step-by-step step, some things that'll honestly, if you implement them right now, or if you turn around, here's what I recommend, for those of you that are team leaders, Share this into your teams, but also turn around, like take notes of what I'm saying and reteach this stuff to your teams. You could even chunk it down and break it out into like if you host weekly team meetings or something like that, like we do a weekly Zoom where we basically mastermind with a few of our team members and we take a topic and we like dissect it out. Right, And so we literally chunk down certain topics. I'm gonna give you several things that you could take a piece of and teach one of these things to your team on your next team call. So like sometimes, I'll tell y'all, sometimes as team leaders, like we're like, oh my gosh, it's time for our call. What the heck do I do a training about? <laughs> okay, so use things like this. If you ever see a video that you feel like was really good, take some notes, take pieces of it and teach that onto your team call or your Zoom or whatever, right? Okay, so if you are a brand new promoter and I was teaching you like, okay, here's all the things you need to know as a brand new baby promoter, brand new network marketer in your business, I'm gonna tell you guys the things that I would teach you right out of the gate, okay? Some of them have to do with mindset, some of them are tangible things like literally go say this, okay? I'm gonna go as fast as I can. So you can always watch the replay if like I talk a mile a minute, you can always go back and rewind it or pause. Okay, step one, stay, take a baby step towards one goal. I think a lot of times brand new people in network marketing set their sights really gigantic and huge, and that's great, but they forget all the prep work they need to do ahead of time. Okay, so hey Kelly, oh yes, if you are catching me live, say something. I don't see, Facebook is being so wonky lately. I don't know if y'all have noticed this when you go live, but I can't see names like I used to, um, at least not on my app, until you say something. Um, like I can see a number up there, but I can't see names. So I wanna give you guys a shout out. If you happen to share it, say that below. Hey Jennifer, um, if so, if you happen to share it, say that, let me know that below so I can give you a shout out as well. And um, if you're catching me on replay, just say replay. If you're new to my videos, type new. I want to know that too. And um, I was actually just telling a friend of mine, Johnny, that I actually also post these on YouTube. So um, like if you're at work or something like that, or if that's easier for you, I also post videos on YouTube. So, okay. So don't set your site so big that you forget the beginning stages. Hey, Denise, set one baby goal at a time. So when I launched this brand new promoter who skyrocketed, hey, Courtney, who did like awesome, she got this huge bonus, she, I mean, she's flying. <clears throat> I literally walked her through like, okay, step one, okay, this is the first goal you need to have. For most of you, your first goal is to get one person on your product or on your service, one. A lot of people start their business and they're like, I'm gonna get my whole town. <laughs> I'm gonna be like a, a gazillionaire. I'm gonna get the jet. I'm gonna get the Maserati. I'm gonna get all this stuff. Look, start with one, because here's the thing. If you can have one new person on your product or your service, you are qualified to have hundreds, thousands, hundreds of thousands, but you have to start with one. So your baby goal, your step one goal is get one person. Then, what I told her is now turn around and help that one person. In, in our company, we have like a refer to get free, right? So help that one person go get it for free. Like you have to always stay focused on what's next, what's in it for that person, 
right? So what does that person want? So whatever it is, if they're a new team member, what it, what do they want? They probably want their first bonus, their first cash bonus, right? The fast start bonus or whatever. So focus on that one thing. Then you as the leader, you've got to tell them, okay, now that you've achieved that, don't let your foot off the gas. Let's go to step two, which is this next goal. You have to lead the way as a team leader. If you're the one that's brand new, you need to literally take it step by step and day by day in these little tiny baby step, these little chunks, okay? Let me talk about mindset for a quick second because I think a lot of times people sign up into something, they start a network marketing business and they're like, I need to learn all these sales strategies and these slick language and take this course and take that guru program and what, listen, you don't need any of that stuff to get started. You really don't. Those are skills that you can hone in on later. Those are things that you can invest in later. Your mindset is probably the number one thing that you probably skip um, sharpening in, in terms of like your skill set. You wanna learn scripts and things to say. You wanna learn, learn closing strategies and follow up techniques. What you're skipping is your mindset. And so as a brand new promoter, in your business, you're going to have challenges. You're going to have obstacles. You're gonna have people that you knew from high school saying like, ew, that's like a pyramid scheme because they, they don't even know what that means. <laughs> okay, you're going to have and you're going to face challenges like that. So I, I would tell you as a brand new promoter, expect it and not just that, welcome it. That means that you're literally stepping into the door of you're going now, you're going places, you're, you're on your way. If you have gotten to the point where you're facing challenges and obstacles and stuff like that, you've walked through the door, okay? So expect them and welcome them because that way you as a new promoter too, you're not gonna freak out the first time somebody tells you no, somebody says it's a pyramid scheme, somebody who's quite frankly a little uneducated on that in that topic. Um, I mean, no offense, they, again, they don't know what they don't know, right? But if you expect it and welcome it and you're prepared for it, it's not gonna phase you, right? The other thing is as a new promoter, don't rely on your friends and family. I know this is a little backwards from what some people talk about is like make your list of 100 and go make 100 Facebook messages and copy this and paste that, y'all. Don't rely on your friends and family to grow your business, okay? Now I will say, you have to tell your friends and family that you're doing something. <laughs> I have actually seen in real life, my own eyes, I have actually seen somebody say like, oh, okay, I don't wanna rely on my friends and family so I won't tell my friends and family. They're family, I think it was like their sister-in-law or something, I can't remember, it's forever ago, but they actually went to work, a coworker that they don't even like said, hey, can you come to this party that I'm hosting? It was like a home party type deal. Can you come to this party that I'm hosting and uh, help you know support my new business and whatever? And the, the person was like, okay, it's a friend from work. So they went, y'all, that person, their family member signed up with that acquaintance that they didn't even really like from work in that person's new business and they like skyrocketed. The fa Imagine your family member <laughs> that you haven't told about your business, learning about your company or your product or your thing from somebody that they don't like at a place of business they don't wanna be at and they like the idea of it so much that they signed up with that person or ordered from that person and not you. Why? Because you haven't even told them what you're doing yet. So don't rely on your friends and family, but you at least have to say, kind of like in a cool casual way, like, hey, just so you know, I found this product, it's giving me more energy, my knee doesn't hurt anymore, I'm sleeping better, my skin looks better, whatever, I've lost weight. Um, hey, I, I don't know if it'd even be a good fit for you or not, but I just wanted to let you know, this is what it is. It's called blah, blah, blah. So if you ever hear anything about it, just know like, I'm your girl, I'm your person. Right, um, and I wanna let you know, cause I respect you, you're my family, whatever, whatever the case may be, maybe you don't respect them, I don't know. <laughs> but whatever it is, say, I just wanted to let you know, just in case you saw it, you'd know that's what I'm involved in, it's my new business that I'm doing on the side. At least let them know you guys, you cannot like hide it, because what if it actually is something that they want? 
here's the reality. Did you sign up for a business that has a product that people would want or not? If you did, like, hello, your friends and family might want it, but don't rely on them. You're not going to go to your friends and family being like, I'm going to be mad at you if you don't buy this thing or sign up with me or whatever. Like, don't even expect it. Consider it like gravy. <laughs> okay. Like icing on the cake. Okay. The other thing is when you launch your business as a new promoter, you might get it twisted that the best and the fastest way to grow your business is to enroll other people who want to build a business. Yes, theoretically that's true in terms of like, you want people who lock arms with you who wanna grow a business. In my personal opinion, in my experience, the best promoters, the best reps in your business are happy customers who have a story. They started taking your product or they signed up with your service and they're like, wow, that's legit. I love that. I really need to tell Joe about that. You know, his knee hurts or his electricity bill is too high or whatever, whatever you're doing. Why, if you had a good experience with something, why would you want to keep it a secret from somebody else? Your customers are going to feel the same way. If they're having a good experience with your product or with your service, they're going to want to tell people about it. That's just the way it works. And people who are excited, who have a story, they come from a place that's from the heart. They're more authentic. They're not coming at it from like a pitchy, pitch slap kind of yucky way. They're coming at it from like a, hey, I really, this is awesome. You might like this. You've been saying your knee hurts and you've been saying you're low on energy. You know what? You can't even play with your kids anymore. Like, dude, you need to get on this. Have you heard of blah, blah, blah? You, you need to have that message with someone. And it can turn into, wow, it really helped me and I decided to put my name on this product. That's how it happens. It's how it happens for most of us, right? If you're in network marketing, that probably is the way it happened for you. Um, thank you so much for sharing. Hey, Joseph. Hey, Robin. I do see your name now. I wonder what changed. All right, if you guys are um, watching me live, just say something below because Facebook is wonky sometimes. If you're catching me on replay, just type replay. If you're new to my videos, put new. Um, and if you happen to share this with your team, with your people who are on Facebook, who are, are in network marketing, who are in MLM, direct sales, anything like that, if they follow you, who they're in this type of business where it would help them, let me know that you've shared it and I would love to give you a shout out. Okay, this is a big one. This is like if I sandwiched it in the middle, y'all. <laughs> Don't be emotionally attached to the outcome. This is really hard. And I'm not talking about just like when you talk to somebody about your business or your service, like being emotionally attached to them saying yes. I'm talking like in all areas. Don't be emotionally attached when you've got a customer who orders who decides not to order again. Don't be emotionally attached when you have a promoter who signs up to join your team and doesn't do anything. It happens <laughs> a lot. Don't be emotionally attached when you set a goal to earn a trip, a car, a whatever, a bonus, a widget, whatever, and you don't hit it. Don't be emotionally attached. Set a goal, try to hit the goal, but don't freak out and lose all your wind if it doesn't work out or if someone else's, if someone else's problem makes them stop what they're doing, how that does not affect you. You are not gonna take the blame for other people's failure any more than you would take all the credit for all their success, right? I said that on another video. Um, so don't get emotionally attached. Don't get it twisted. That Because what happens is when you get emotionally attached and you start to get it really twisted up in your spirit, people can smell it like a mile away, y'all. Like People can definitely feel the difference between you want this for them because you think it'd be awesome if they joined or if they got on your product or they signed up for your service or whatever. They can tell the difference between what's in it for them and, ooh, I need you to sign up because I need to hit this bonus and me, 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 and I, 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 and you know, I need a new person. <laughs> they can totally smell that. So no matter, even if that's how you feel, hey Barbara, um, even if that's how you feel inside, master talking to so many people that quite frankly, it's okay if somebody doesn't do it because you've got a pipeline full of other people that you got to get to, like a whole list of people. You are not circling around the same five people. You cannot do that. 
If you're a new person, you've got to have a ton of people that are in your mind who would be benefited by taking your product or signing up for your business or uh, your service or whatever, okay? Along that same line, follow up. You guys, I've been in this business a long time. I'm like your great, great grandma, okay? In network marketing, like almost 20 years in network marketing. This is what I've done almost my entire adult life. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna give you some great grandma wisdom here, okay? Following up is the number one thing I truly believe most people who fail in network marketing or MLM or direct sales, whatever, is because they don't follow up after the very first objection or the very first not right now. Isn't that great? Like here, I'll, I'll give you guys, I'll enlighten you for a moment. I ignored my sponsor, my current, my sponsor of my current company about the product that she was trying to talk to me about. I ignored her for two years about the product. Okay, not only that, I was friends with her for like eight years at the time. I ignored her for two years. Meanwhile, she had earned the millionaire award in her first 11 months promoting this specific product. And I still ignored her. I still blew it off thinking, whatever, that's silly. I've heard it all, <laughs> okay? I literally blew it off for that long. I went back and we were like kind of joking around. Do you know she followed up with me like 23 times? 23 times. How many times are you willing to follow up with someone who's like blowing you off? You totally can see the check mark on Facebook Messenger. You know that they, you know they read your message. You know they did. You can see the check mark and they haven't done anything. They haven't responded to you. They, you know that the message, the text message that you sent, it says delivered. You know they got your text message, but they haven't replied back. Like, what do you do? Do you just Forget it and just stop following up. Do you know that most people do that? Most people do. On the flip side, do you know that 80% of purchases are made in the sales space after the 11th follow-up? What? Seriously, do you know, how, like look at that gap. Most people stop following up after the first rejection. Forget about the third rejection. Most people don't even go there after like hearing no or hearing not right now or hearing objection after rejection after objection after rejection multiple times. Like after the third, fourth, fifth, eighth, tenth time, you're going to be like, forget it. <laughs> Onward and upward, right? Which yes, you should do, but you better be following up. You need to be circling back because seriously, most people don't. So as a brand new person, you have got to include following up as one of your most important tasks that you do. You have to. But don't be weird about following up. Don't be like, hey girl, I just wanted to check in and see if you're ready to place that order. Hey girl, like if that's the only thing you're talking to that person about, I could do a whole nother, I could do a whole nother topic on following up. But you can't do the whole, hey girl, just want to see if you're ready. Hey girl, there's a promo. Hey girl, there's a coupon. Hey girl, there's a whatever. You can't, you can't do that. You have to be classy in your follow-up because you can't, you're not going to have a friend continue to trust you if now all of a sudden you're Mr. MLM, okay? You still have to be the same person that you were before you signed up for this thing or your friends are gonna be like, I don't know what like alien <laughs> abducted him and like took him off in outer space and MLM space or something. Seriously, be the same person, but you do want to follow up. So I should, if let me know if a whole video about following up and like the different ways you can do that, being authentic, being classy, but still effective. Let me know if that would be interesting to you. I'll, t I'll totally do a whole nother training on that. Okay, this is another big one. Keep your eyes in your own lane. Do y'all remember um, the Michael Phelps clip when he was swimming in the Olympics? I'm so not a sports. Y'all, I'm wearing an MTV shirt, not a sports shirt. <laughs> okay, but Michael, one of the things I remember is whoever the other guy was in the other lane, next to Michael Phelps, Michael Phelps was swimming. The guy in the other lane is a great swimmer, a, a great athlete but he lost by like milliseconds because what they think happened is they actually caught him on clip. He was watching Michael Phelps. 
He was not looking at his goal, at his target, swimming in his own lane. He was looking that way to try and see what his neighbor was doing, what that other company over there is doing, what's that team doing, what's that promoter doing, what's my sideline doing, what's my upline doing. Y'all, as a new promoter, you have got to stay focused and stay in your lane. Thank you so, so much for sharing. Cassandra Jean Kennedy, thank you for sharing. Carol Webb Lawson, thank you. I know you always share my videos. Thank you guys so much. Um, so stay in your own lane. Here's the thing. You also have to stay focused on your one thing. I know when you're a brand new person in your business, it's tempting to like, I'm gonna sign up for jewelry. I'm gonna sign up and sell makeup. I'm gonna sign up and sell supplements. And I'm gonna sign up and sell electricity. And I'm gonna do all the things that way. If I talk to one person, surely something out of the seven things that I promote, I can, I'll find something that they can buy, <laughs> okay? Here's the deal. Find one thing that you are passionate about, that you love, and that you are seeing. Have a business mind. Don't just become emotionally invested because you've been there for a long time. You need to find that thing that fuels your heart, that lights your fire, that you feel that fire in your belly and you like have to go tell the world about that thing. Because scattered effort leads to scattered results. Okay, so like if you're focusing on jewelry one day and leggings the next day and supplements this day and makeup that day, all from different companies, okay, like it's different if it's one company under one umbrella, that's different. But if you're like in seven different network marketing companies, y'all, you might have a teeny speck of success in each of them, which is rare. Here's the thing though, I've been around a lot of top leaders. I've been on Eric Worre stages surrounded when I was speaking at his two um, events, I got to speak on the stage twice in two years, all about social media. Great honor. I feel like I had the best seats in the house being a speaker <laughs> because I got to like be right there with the other speakers. And I got to be surrounded by six, seven, eight figure earners all around me. And we were all collaborating like what works, what doesn't work, right? Here's the thing. Between all of us, we talked about this, not one time in those conversations at two different Eric Worre events where I spoke at, was it ever decided that we've ever seen anyone be super successful hitting the top rank of a company in two separate companies? You can't, I, I don't know of one, if there is, I, I, I'm just not aware. I have seen people get to the top and then literally stop building and then focusing on another one, which I don't advise because that's weird. Um, but I've never seen someone be able to ride two horses at the same time. <laughs> have you? It doesn't work in a horse race. It doesn't work in network marketing. It just doesn't. So choose one vehicle and focus. Stay in your lane. Same way though, you've gotta stay focused if you're in your business. You cannot be looking to your cross line. You cannot be looking at that company's comp plan and this person's sales strategy and oh gosh, I wish my leader would do such and such. Y'all, you can't do that. Take matters into your own hands. If you like this video, share the video to your team. Don't sit there and be like, I wish my sponsor would do videos like that, no. Take action fast and share it to your team and then reteach it to your team. You step up and be the leader. Don't sit there and wish, wish your sponsor had this or wish your team did that or whatever. If you know that something is missing, you do it. You do it. Because guess what? A lot of people probably have no idea that something's even missing. So if that's something that you're feeling like in your intuition that something is missing, you do it. Okay, but stay focused on the goal at hand. What is next for you? What is your next goal? What goal did you just hit? What's the next most logical step? If you're not sure what the most next logical step should be in your business, that's when you need to say, reach up, reach out to someone, a mentor. Maybe it is somebody in your upline. Maybe it is someone in a generic network marketing space who can just say, okay, and like help you dissect, okay, what should be the next logical step in your business? If you're literally stuck because you don't know what to do next, first of all, you're normal. That happens. Um, but you have to not stay there. 
You can't stay there. You have to like go forward and focus on what's next. Okay. I say this to our team like a lot. I think on our last like three mastermind Zooms, I've probably said this on each one of them because I feel like it's that important. And this is going to hit, some of you guys are not going to like me after I say this, but that's okay. I love you. <laughs> are you proof that your products work? Are you proof that your business works? Are people looking at your Facebook or looking at your stories or looking at your life or looking at what you post on Facebook? Like, are you chatty Cathy and super negative and woe is me and Donald Trump this and politics that and whatever when you're promoting a product that's supposed to be for like energy and positivity and feel good? Like, hello, <laughs> right? Are you saying, how sick you are all the time, but you're supposed to be promoting like essential oils that make your immune system better. Like you have to be, I'm not saying fake it because that's, that's bad advice. If your leaders or your team members have ever told you to fake it till you make it, don't listen to that. Take that piece of advice and like chunk it. <laughs> okay. Take everything else good that they say and plant it. Take that bad seed and flick it. Don't listen to that nonsense. You don't fake it till you make it. What you do is what I tell my team to do. You faith it till you make it. So if you want to be proof that your product is working, if you want to be proof that your business is working, okay, then you have to take your product. You have to be consistent with it. But here's the thing, especially if you're promoting it on social media, you guys, you have to show people that you're taking your product. You have to also show people what the product is doing for you. You can't just say this product has X ingredient and it does this. No, you need to like show in real life. I was able to paint my entire downstairs. My house is not small because my product makes me feel like a unicorn. Like I feel like superwoman when I take my product, okay? You have to like put it in real life terms where people can understand that. Are you proof that your product works? Are you proof that your business works? Now here's the thing. As a brand new promoter, this is what I say. If you are not proof yet, cause you know, most of, most of my team members are customers who are like super happy and they wanna share it, <laughs> okay? But if you are not proof yet, if you don't have a story yet, you faith it till you make it and that you do that by you know someone who is proof that the products work right don't you have in your business in your company do you have any success stories going on hopefully yes <laughs> okay do you have any before and after pictures that you're seeing people like having success with your product do you have any awesome stories where someone's like was able to move into a better zip code because of your business, because of your company. If do, if you don't have your own story yet, you know someone who does. So you can literally bring that into a conversation. If someone grills you and they're like your friends, then okay, well, it's a weight loss product and how come you haven't lost any weight? Like, first of all, that's not a real friend because <laughs> they're kind of a jerk. But if it's like your Aunt Matilda, we all know we don't like Aunt Matilda and she's at Thanksgiving dinner, she might, well, you don't lost very much weight, so I don't know if that product works. Okay, you've got an Aunt Matilda. I'm so sorry, if y'all really do have an Aunt Matilda and she's really nice, please let me know, so I'll stop saying Matilda. <laughs> but if your Aunt Matilda starts grilling you about your product, if you don't have a story yet, then you say, for me, I haven't gotten there yet, Aunt Matilda, but I know someone who has lost X amount of weight and she's feeling so healthy and she's feeling like she can play with her kids again and I'm so excited to promote a product that's helping people feel better. Oh, Aunt Matilda, I know that's not my personal story yet, but I know someone who was able to pay off her credit card debt in less than a year and I'm so excited to be a part of a community that's helping people do that. Do you see, you can use other people's stories, know someone who has done that. You don't have to know them personally. That could be your sponsor. It could be someone cross line. I know someone who. I know of someone who. It doesn't have to be you yet, but don't be afraid to tell those stories as proof that your product is working or that your business is legit, because it is. 
You do not need to fake camera angles and fake your rented Lamborghini to pretend that you're losing weight and that your business is flying. It's okay to say, oh, I'm still getting started. I know it's been four years. I'm, I'm just getting warmed up, Aunt Matilda, but listen, I know someone who paid off their mortgage and they burned that piece of paper. It is so neat to be a part of a company that encourages people to pay off debt. Y'all, that is very powerful. So do not fake it till you make it. Do faith it till you make it by leveraging someone that you know. I know someone who, okay? The last thing is, second to last thing. Okay, I think I kind of covered this, but stay classy. Y'all, I think the biggest thing that people do when they get into a network marketing company or in a direct sales company, they their brain like fizzles out and they have like neurons that misfire and all kinds of wacky things happen in their mind. And all of a sudden they're Mr. MLM. They're like posting their company's graphic and posting their link and join my team and buy this thing and product placement, product logo, company logo. They change their, don't change your profile picture to your company's logo, please and thank you. <laughs> they, you stay who you are. Stay true to yourself. You are not all of a sudden Mr. MLM or Mrs. Network Marketing. You're not. You are not your company's brand. You are not your company's logo. You need to be who you are. Just up leveled a little bit. Because now, like I've told my team, now you're lifting the lid to not just focus on what's in here for you. You're lifting the lid on how many people can you help because of your business or your product, right? So instead of being Mr post my link every day and post my product every day and show the name of the label every day. Stop it. Stop doing that kind of stuff. Be classy. You want people asking you, what is that thing you're always talking about that's giving you more energy? What is that oil that you use that like helps your immune system? How come you never get the flu? <laughs> like, How come you're able to run football drills with your son as a retired army veteran, Barbara Warren? Like, How are you able to do that? Like you want people asking you, what in the heck are you doing? And that way you can be like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad you asked. Actually, I found this product that's helping me with my energy and all kinds of stuff. But listen, I'm still relatively new or, or hey, listen, I don't know all the information, all the mumbo jumbo, but I have something I can send you if you want to check it out. Sure, that'd be great. Okay, awesome. Now you've got them in a conversation. But you don't have to be like, spam my link, buy my thing, buy my product, join my team. Like that's old school. If your sponsors are telling you to do that, God bless them. Bless and release. They probably are going on old school strategies that used to work. That stuff does not work anymore. So they just don't know what they don't know. It's okay. <laughs> People out there that are still saying the name of their company and still saying the name of their product, they just don't realize that does not work anymore. It doesn't, okay? But you have to like love them where they're at, right? The last thing and the best, if I could like hold your face and say like, look at me, <laughs> look at me in the eyes. I want you guys to hear my heart when I say this, okay? I'm like holding your face right now. <laughs> um, don't quit on a bad day, don't. Don't start looking at other companies, don't start trying other products, don't start looking at other comp plans on a bad day. You will have bad days in this type of business, it's hard. It's not hard, it's challenging. It's going to stretch you. It's gonna pull things out of you that you didn't know existed. It's going to force you to level up. It's going to force you way outside your comfort zone and it might be painful. Growth is painful, okay? But look at me. Don't call it quits on a bad day. Don't, okay? If you've thought about it, and you've prayed about it, and there's another option that logistically makes sense, and you need to make a move, make a move. But don't you do it on your worst day. Don't you do it when you're mad at somebody, or when you didn't hit that bonus, or when you missed that rank, or you didn't make that car bonus, or you didn't earn that trip, or your customer quit, or you've got no more team members. <laughs> don't you quit on that bad day, because you can always start over in this business. You don't have to take another $200,000 loan out to start your traditional brick and mortar business, restaurant or whatever. You just simply wake up 
tomorrow morning and decide I'm gonna start over. I'm gonna do it over. I'm gonna start where I am. I'm gonna use what I have and I'm gonna do what I can and I will add to that Arthur Ashe quote, right where you are, right where you are. You do not quit on a bad day. But let me also add, do not take your foot off the gas on a good day. I think a lot of people miss that part. They're always like, don't quit on a bad day. Don't take your foot off the gas on a good day. When you have that goal, when you are like, I did it, I crushed it, I got that trip, I earned that rank, I'm gonna be on stage with my big check, I ripped up my mortgage, I have made it to the top of the comp plan, I got five new customers and five new team members and I am on a freaking roll, I am like good at this. I mean, I got the bonus and my CEO knows my name and like all this stuff and you're like, I can coast, I can just drift. I will tell you right now, this business is like this, a roller coaster. You have got to keep the electricity going because when it goes up and down and you decide on a good day to take your foot off the gas and to stop pressing forward, to stop following up, to stop sharing your product, to stop being enthusiastic about your business, to stop being a proof that your product works, or I know someone who, or did you read that story, or oh my gosh, did you get on that call? You stop going to events, you stop getting on calls, you stop getting on your team masterminds, you take your foot off the gas, your roller coaster will come to a screeching halt. Momentum is fleeting. When you first start your business, the first few months, you're gonna be like, if you do it right, you're gonna be like, rock it. First four, five, six, nine months, they're going to fly if you do it right. But if you take your foot off the gas or if you turn around, you're like, I can just manage these people and let them run the business and they're gonna skyrocket and I'm a leader now. That means I need to lead all the calls and I'm gonna start my own group and I'm gonna start my own chats and I'm gonna start my own this and own that. Listen, every second, every millisecond that you spend doing that other stuff, you're taking your foot off the gas pedal. What happens if you're on the Autobahn and you decide to take your foot off the gas? Y'all, bad thing, like they're going 100 miles an hour and you take your foot off the gas and you're gonna get rear-ended, <laughs> okay? That's kind of a bad example. but. Don't take your foot off the gas because you will lose momentum. So if you feel like, okay, I'm in that space, I think I probably took my foot off the gas or I probably turned into like manager mode, leader mode, because I got kind of full of myself. Um, it's easy to fix, y'all. Just go back, go back to the basics. Start with that baby step. If you missed it, it's in the beginning of this video. Baby step, what's that first goal you wanna hit? Just get one new person on your product. Start so small. One new person on your product or your service. Just one, doesn't matter, I don't care if it's a customer, I don't care if it's a promoter, one new person. Then do the next one. I promise you the momentum will come back. Momentum is abundant. Just like money, just like people, just like time. There's abundance. Your business is never stuck unless you choose to just take your foot off the gas and leave the car. <laughs> you can start over anytime. Okay, you've got this. But if you were a brand new promoter and you're just starting your team, honestly, that is the best advice I can give you. A lot of people are like, what words should I say? And what some cool language to follow up? And how many times a day should I post? And what graphic should I post? Uh, Y'all, none of that stuff matters at all if you don't have these foundational things. If you are a leader, please do your people a favor and share it if you wanna save some time. Reteach it if you want to revoice it in your own words, okay? But share this out. You have got to let your new people, they have got to learn these exact principles. I have seen a lot of really cool things in network marketing. I've seen a lot of really awful things in network marketing. Um, the best people who last the longest in this type of business, they have these things like just in their heart. It's truly just a part of them. This is not a hard business. If you're brand new and you're like, I don't know, what the heck, I'm, I wanna speak life into you. This is not a hard business. This is a business that can be learned. You are capable of learning this business. You are capable of learning how to be successful. You are capable of learning the skills you need to know. 
what's inside of you needs to be the willingness to be coached, the willingness to realize I may be doing something kind of off and need to tweak it, and the desire to help other people. That's all you need to be qualified to be successful in this type of business. If you have that in your heart somewhere, anywhere, you can do this. You don't need a different company, different comp plan, different whatever. You need, if you love your product and you love your business, run with it. If you've died out and it's fizzled out, start over. Wake up tomorrow morning and be like, okay, this I'm gonna start over as if I'm brand new. And if you've made mistakes in the past where it's like you've kind of like been that person, Mr. MLM, go back and just authentically be like, I think I did this the wrong way when I was first starting. Can I get like a do-over? Cause I'm still really in love with this product, but I think I totally like went about it the total wrong way. Just do it. What, what's the worst that can happen, right? Just do it. People love the authenticity. I have, I have won people's hearts just by being myself. People know I'm not perfect. I screw up. I say stupid things sometimes as I'm learning like years ago. I'm serious, y'all. We all make mistakes. We all make those weird spammy messages and spammy posts as we're learning until when you know better, then you do better, right? Okay, so I hope this was helpful. Share this out. Let me know if you share it. I would love to give you a shout out. I'll come back and type messages to you, so definitely let me know that. If you are new to my videos, hello and welcome. Um, if you actually push the video, um, like you can tap my face basically, and there's three dots to the right, you can click following um, or send me a friend request. It's really me, I answer messages, so if you have any questions or anything like that about something that I said, I know I talk a mile a minute, um, but click the following button and that way you can also turn on notifications if you wanna be notified when I go live so you can like interact and stuff. Thank you so much, Siri Bender, for sharing. Um, thank you guys so much too. If I happen to miss you guys that shared, um, I will come back and make comments. Hey, Marcella, thank you, you're amazing. Thank you, Barbara. Um, thank you guys so much. I I really appreciate it. Um, and again, I will post this on YouTube if you found that helpful. You can always catch my videos over there. And I hope you guys have a blessed night. I hope this was helpful to you and your teams. Um, and I love you guys and I'm praying the best for you. And I'll see you guys on another video. Bye y'all.